dreams of winning the Daytona 500, but to win it, you have to be in it. The weather here in Daytona, absolutely beautiful. Now, we did have a few brief showers this morning, so back here in the fan zone with Jeff Hammond. Want to know, Jeff, how will weather affect the track and those drivers that we see out there right behind us right now? Well, right now, they've washed a little bit of rubber off the racetrack, and the key thing is, how quick can it get put back down? It's going to be probably have a little bit more grip than normal, but a lot of guys are anticipating to turn it off to be really slick like it's been during the practice sessions. And the main thing is, as we watch these guys go through this transition, is how much of an influence what they learn here in the first race will affect the guys in the second race. Well, I know three other sets of eyes that will be watching those up in the booth. Mike Joy, Larry McReynolds, and Darrell Waltrip. Mike, are you three ready to duel? Thanks, Krista. We're ready in what is the most spine-tingling and maybe most important race of Speed Weeks absent the last lap of the Daytona 500 because, Larry, for 17 drivers in these two races, they can either lock in a quarter-million-dollar payday on Sunday or they can load up and go home with nothing. And, Mike, every race team down there, they've been preparing for this biggest race of the year for months. And the last thing you want to do, even though we run a 36-race schedule, is miss the first race of the year. And I think it's a 60-lap race, 150 miles. I think things will be kind of calm in the beginning. But there's still a phrase from my buddy DW. In the end, there's a lot of desperate people, and desperate people will do desperate things. Yes, they will. So, Darrell, we'll watch the race for the bubble closely. But for Martin Truex, for Mark Martin and the other drivers, drivers that were in top 35 and points are fast on speed and are locked in. Why are they trying to win this race? Well, I, I kind of think about the bull and the matador. You know, the bull comes into the ring and he's not mad at all until he sees that red cape. And then he goes crazy. These guys are calm <laughs> and cool and all. We're just going to put a few laps down, do a little testing until they see the green cape. And then they get their game face on. It's a race at Daytona. You want to win it. And you'll take a chance or two, even though you're locked into this thing, you'll still give it all you got. Two races, a whole lot of faces. Let's show them to you. The drivers who will start Gatorade 150, number one in today's duel at Daytona. Now, Bill Elliott on speed, he's locked into the show along with all the drivers that finished, whose car owners finished in the top 35 in points for 2008. Joe Nemechek there, that 87 car, good starting position. He'll be one of the guys trying to race his way into this 500. Scott Riggs is another, an unsponsored car from Tommy Baldwin. He's trying to make the show. John Andretti, Brad Keselowski trying to time their way in. Kirk Shelmerdeen, who had a $200,000 payday here three years ago, trying again along with Tony Raines, Mike Skinner, and Carl Long. Those are the drivers who hope to gain a spot in the field. They have to be among the first two to finish this race from the drivers not qualified. Well, let's talk to a driver that is qualified and see what his strategy is today. Hey, um, Martin Trix, Darrell Waltrip in the uh, Fox Sports booth. You got a copy, buddy? Martin Trix, it's a DW. You got a copy? I hear him trying to key the mic, but he's not getting through to us, Daryl. Might be bad timing. Uh, he's right here in front of his pit box. Go ahead, Martin. It's DW. You got a copy? He's focused on trying to win this race, right? Yeah, now. I think he's probably uh, there. So you know, I think you can hear us. I heard a little blitz going into one when you talked about your helmet. Just take your time. we got time here, and uh, we're coming away. Um, yeah, it sounds like he's having a little audio problem, and uh, we may talk to him later in the race. Okay. Getting ready to race at Daytona. Let's uh, go pit side and start with Steve Burns. Well, Mike, after 10 years of driving that number 20 car for Joe Gibbs Racing, Tony Stewart comes here to Daytona trying to win his first Daytona 500, driving the 14 car that he owns. He told me right before getting into the car, his car pulls up well in the draft, but then stalls out. It's all about trying to find more speed for the Daytona 500, Matt. Steve, for the young man who replaced Tony Stewart on this veteran number 20 Joe Gibbs racing team, Joey Logano, he told me it's a combo platter of goals today, but the biggest is just survive. It's already been a roller coaster speed week. Saturday morning in practice, he slapped the wall. His team spent much of Saturday afternoon repairing that 20 machine. He sought out advice from a lot of different people in the NASCAR garage, but he told me one of the biggest pieces of advice came from a veteran, Donnie Ellis. He said simply, just go out and have fun. That's what got you here. To Dick Bergman. 
500 sprint car racers behind him. Joe Nemechek wasn't about ready to give up when he came into 2009 without a car, without a ride. So he went out a month ago and formed his own team, bought a car, that's what he's got here. One car, no backup, a couple of engines, and he desperately needs to qualify for this race to get enough money to go to California to find a sponsor. Joe Nemechek, the veteran, is about to drive the race of his life. Thanks, Dick. We're on one to go. 28 cars in this first duel, 60 laps, 150 miles. You see that pit window, 42 to 46 laps. As I mentioned, this is a 60-lap race. We know there will at least be one pit stop for fuel, but I've got a feeling they may want tires more often than that. Pit road speed, 55 miles per hour. There you see cars to the rears. Casey Mears had an engine problem before qualifying, and in the final practice yesterday, Jamie McMurray and Michael Waltrip get together on the front stretch. Both of those teams had to go to a backup car. Yeah, Michael Waltrip's in the uh, pit in the 55 car. The inspectors all around the car looking under. That is a backup car. Uh, maybe something's possibly leaking on the car. They have a they're having a pretty serious discussion here about what's going on. Yeah, neither one of those cars got out on the racetrack because that happened almost as practice was about to end. Problem with the scoring transponder. Oh, that's why they were looking under it. I thought maybe it had an oil leak. And that is required to transmit the car's position at each of NASCAR's loops around the track and most importantly at the start finish line. You can't race if you can't be scored. Now, I wonder where you'd find a spare one of those. Hmm. Here's what we're going to keep an eye on with our crawl across the top of your screen. Position numbers with a gray background. Those drivers are locked in the 500. They are racing for starting position and pit selection. A driver whose position, not his car number, but his position, has a green background. They are in one of the two positions that will allow them to race their way into the field. The drivers who are on the outside looking in will have their position number backgrounded in yellow. They have the transponder installed. You can see them. It goes right on the outside of the frame at the right rear of the car. It's a little black box. And as you mentioned, Mike, it's what scores the car around this racetrack. Installed, Michael Waltrip, 55 car, good to go. There's crew chief, Booty Barker. All right, a quick word from Steve Burns. Mike just didn't want DW to feel like he was alone. Martin Truex Jr. just told Kevin Mannion a moment ago that he finally could hear him on the radio. In fact, they had gone so far as to tell Martin to use hand signals, tap on the door if you're loose and that kind of thing, but he does hear them now, but that's just happened in the last few seconds. I was thinking about using hand signals, but I couldn't get the windows rolled down up here to wave at him. So we'll talk to him a little later on here, maybe. 